we've now got an initial implementation of our sorting algorithm put together. Right now, the algorithm only works with an array of numbers. But remember, we eventually want this to work with a string of characters, or even a linked list eventually. To get a better idea of how we could somehow make this algorithm work with a string of characters or even a linked list, we're going to spend this video doing a quick comparison or thinking about how we would have to change this code right here if our collection was a string instead of an array of numbers. We could go through this same exercise with the linked list as well, but for right now we'll just keep things easy and think about what has to change if collection is instead a string. Now to help us do this comparison and think about what we would have to change, let's do a very quick review of how strings work in JavaScript. There are two very important elements I want to make sure are super crystal clear around strings, because these two elements are going to help you understand what's going to have to change inside of here. Okay, so to get started, I'm going to pull open a JavaScript console really quickly just to write out some quick sample code. So inside of here, I'm going to define a new array of numbers called numbers. So as you very well know, when we work with an array of numbers, we can access individual elements by using that familiar square bracket syntax. So this would give me the first element inside the numbers array, right? Business as usual, nothing crazy here. Likewise, we can update elements inside of an array by using that same bracket notation and saying, hey, here's a new value to stick in at that index. So if I run that code, now the first element inside the numbers is going to be 200 instead. Once again, business as usual. So now let's try taking the same kind of syntax right here, those same updates we did, but apply them to a string instead. So strings in JavaScript are kind of interesting because some aspects of them work like arrays, but others don't quite work so well. So I'm going to create a new string called color, and I'll give it a string of red. So remember, strings kind of sometimes work like arrays. So for example, I could use color at zero and get the first element out of there like so. So that gave me the first character inside that string, which is an R. So I can use that familiar bracket notation to access elements within a string. However, here's the big thing to understand here. Strings in JavaScript are immutable. That means that we cannot change a character inside this string. We can assign color a new string, like we can change the value that color points at very easily. Well, if it wasn't a const keyword variable, but we could change the variable at the end of the day pretty easily, but we cannot change an actual string. So in other words, I can write out something like color at zero equals capital Y. And I can run that. And it's going to look like I just updated the first character in there to a capital Y. But if I print out color, it is still red. So this is a very important difference between numbers, or excuse me, arrays, and a string of characters. So what does this mean? Well, this means that our swapping logic right here is not going to work with a string of characters. Right now, our swapping logic is 100% designed to work with an array, specifically an array of numbers, but it would also work with an array of number or strings or booleans or whatever else. But it definitely would not work with a string of characters. So that's definitely a segment of code that we would have to change if we were working with a string instead. Now there's one other expression inside of here that we'd have to change if we were working with a string as well, and that's this if statement comparison right here. So let me show you why we would have to do some work on that as well if we were working on a string. All right, so quick diagram here. So this is a string of characters. I know I kind of have it looking like an array, but it's supposed to be a string, like a continuous string of characters. So right now you'll notice that the string starts off with a capital X and then A, A, A. So if you were writing out JavaScript code for that, it would look like capital X, A, 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 like so. Now let's imagine that we want to sort this string, or we want to get like the sorted form. I think that you would agree with me that to get the sorted form of the string, we would probably sort it alphabetically. And so that capital X would have to go all the way to the end of the string, right? I think that makes sense to say this would be the sorted format of that string. So think about how we would do that with bubble sort. We would compare these two characters, and if the one on the left was greater than the one on the right, that means we would swap them. And that mechanic right there alone, the fact that we consider X, capital X, to be like greater in some form than A, is the sole mechanic that would get that capital X to the right-hand side using our current sorting algorithm. However, this comparison right here doesn't work quite so well in JavaScript. Let me show you what I mean. 
So remember, we are saying, I want to compare the character on the left-hand side of that pair to the character on the right-hand side. So we are comparing X with A. And if this expression is too true, we should swap those characters. But in JavaScript, that comparison right there is false. So that means that using bubble sort or our current implementation of it, we would not move X to the far right-hand side. That would not happen. So why is this considered to be false right here? Well, it's really simple. Every string in JavaScript has a char code at method. So this gives us something called a character code. So the character code for the capital letter capital X is 88. This character code right here is what is used in comparisons like this. So let's get the character code of lowercase a. Lowercase a's char code at is 97. And so this is why capital X greater than A comes up as false. It's because 88 is not greater than 97. So if we did 88 greater than 97, nope, it's false. So this is the actual comparison that goes on behind the scenes. You can actually look up all these character codes if you look at an ASCII table. Here's one right here. So you'll see that I've got like capital X right here. The character code for that is 88. The character code for A, lowercase a, is 97. So this whole character code stuff means that this very basic comparison, like this one right here, completely breaks with our algorithm, or it causes our algorithm to completely break. So that means that specifically, this comparison right here that works really well for an array of numbers would not work at all for a string or even an array of strings. So we've now identified two statements inside of our algorithm that work really well for an array of numbers, but would not work at all if we had a string of characters. First off, we cannot do that direct swapping logic with a string of characters. Second off, we can technically do a comparison of characters at specific indices, but it's not going to give us the result we expect. So the entire point of all this, like this long discussion, all I'm trying to tell you is that given different types of collections, we need to do a very different method of comparison, and we need to do a very different method of swapping. Okay, that's the only thing I want you to understand right now. So let's take that logic. We're going to move on to the next video and figure out how we're going to fix our code to work properly with a string of characters, just as well as with an array of numbers. So quick break, and I'll see you in just a minute.